Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a little bit about TypeScript Generix. And Generix in TypeScript is something you can use if you don't know the type beforehand. So it's very usable if you want to create, a, for example, a, a reusable function or something like that. So instead of using, for example, any, the any type, you shouldn't use that at all, actually, if you can avoid it, because that's not good, because then it will turn off all the type interpretation for that type. So it's better to use a generic if you can do that. And I'm going to explain to you what it is. So first I'm going to return a function that has a parameter that takes in an array. And it's just going to return a new array with those values. So that's what I'm going to do here. So as you can see, I've set up an environment here where I, where I have a TypeScript environment where I'm using parcel so that I have a server here also, as you can see. I'm just console logging out TypeScript generics explained. And this is the TypeScript application here. But I'm not going to create anything here, really. So we're just going to look at the console for this one. OK, so I can remove the sidebar here and also remove this console log. And I'm going to create a function. And I'm just going to call it bad create array because this is no good creating it this way. So I'm going to create another function that is better type than this one. But I'm first going to show you the problem here. So this one is going to take in an array as a parameter, and I type this as an any type. So this is a, an array of any type, and it's going to return an array of any type. And the only thing I'm going to do inside of this one is return the new array that I spread out, the array that I, that I send in. So this one is going to take in an array, and I spread it out here and create a new array. So that's the only thing that this one is going to return. So it's, yeah. Actually, not that useful <laughs> function, but it's great to explaining this topic. So that's why. Okay, so I have this bad create array. So then I create some comment here, bad arrays, like this. I create a const, bad num array. And then I call my function bad create array, and I send in an array with some numbers 1, 10, 20, and 25 like this. And I'm also going to create an array with a string. So const bad string array. Bad create array. And I have some strings. This, whoops, is pretty cool. Yeah. Not that cool actually creating a bad array here, but all right, it will do. So I have a bad numbers array and a bad string array. So I'm going to do some console logging now. First, I'm going to console log out the bad num array like this. And then I console log out the bad string array. Save it. Go back to my browser, see what we got. So we have our arrays here. These are the completely new arrays created by our function. So that's sweet. We know that that works. I'll go back to the code editor. And now I'm going to try to push something to the numbers array here, for example, because if we look here, you can see that this is of the type any. You can always hover over stuff like this in Visual Studio Code, and you will see the type. And this bad num array is a const that has the type of an array that has the value of any. So that's no good, actually, because any is no good to use as I told you before. So if I want to push some, something to this one, bad num array dot push, I want to add something to this array. And I can add a number, 100. Save it. I go back to the browser. As you can see, now I have to console log it out also, of course. Console log bad num array. So first I have the array up here. And then I add the 100, and then I console log it out. So you can see that it says 100 here. Maybe I can make this a little bigger. So that's working. That's good. We have our numbers array. But if we don't want this one to have anything else than numbers in it, this is no good, because this is typed as any now, as you can see here. So we can push whatever we want here. So if I push a string, not good, like this, I save it. Go back to the browser. You can see that we have a mixed array. We have both numbers and st uh, string here. And we don't want that because we want to create arrays with either numbers or strings. So there you can see the any problem because if we type it as any, we can have whatever we want inside of this array. And in our case, we don't want that. So we want 
to be able to create a unique array with just numbers or just strings. So down below here, I'm going to console log. I do a little divider here or something. It's easier to see later. Uh, and actually, I had to create a new function here also. So this is the bad function. Then I create a function that I call create array. Not bad this time because this is good. And for this one, I'm going to create the TypeScript generic. And you do that inside of angle brackets and T. You can name this to whatever you want, but the standard is to have a T. And you can have as many as you want here. So T and U, you just continue in the alphabet down from T. Or you name them to whatever you want. It's completely up to you. But this is the standard. And you can see these ones as kind of a parameter in a function like this. But you can send in a type as a parameter. We don't know the type when we create the function. But when we call the function, we can call that function with a type also. And that type will be used the whole way down inside of the function if we type it to use it. So, for example, the array that we send in here, just the same as we did up here. But we're going to type it as a t and an array instead. And also the return value is going to be a t instead. So that's the only thing that I change here. And then I return a new array. This is the ES6 spread operator. So I can spread out the old array in a new one, and that will create a completely new array. If you didn't know that, so now instead, we didn't type it as any. Now we can send in our own type when we call this function. And that's great because now we can type it as we want. So I create a num array. Just going to scroll up a bit here. I call my create array function. And I have an array, 1, 10, 20, and yeah, 25. And we can send along a type also inside of the angle brackets here. And for this one, I want it to be a number. So I type it as a number. And now you can see that this one is typed as a number, a number array. And that's great. The old one was an Annie. I'm going to create my string array also. Create the array. And I have my angle brackets. And I type it as a string. And this is even cooler. OK, so that's our arrays. And you can see that this one is typed as a string. And then I'm going to console log my num array. And I console log my string array like that. Save it. Just go back to check if it works. Yeah, I have my arrays here. Great. And I have my nice little divider here with the dots. OK, then I'm going to try to push something to this one. First, I'm going to try to push a number. 100. This one is going to work, of course. And of course, yet again, I have to console log something out after I push, pushed it. So I console log out my num array like this. We can see we have the value 100 here. So nothing has changed there, actually. But now, if I try to push, as this one, one here is typed as a number, you can see if I try to push a string, oh, no. This one will give me a warning. It won't accept this. Argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. And this is the power of TypeScript generics. Because now you can't push anything else than what you specify here. And actually, we don't need to have them here. We can remove them because it will interpret this one by itself. So you can see that it says that it's a number, so we don't need to have them. So it all depends on how readable you want it to be. You can have them there if you want. So as you can see, this one will give you a warning so you can't push anything else. And this is why you should use a TypeScript generic before you use an, an anytype, then of course there will be situations where you need to have an anytype, but you shouldn't use any if you don't have to do that. So by using a TypeScript generic on a function like this, for example, it's very, very dynamic and you can make this function to work with a lot of different types. I hope this gave you some new information and that you learned something about TypeScript generics. And if you like my channel, please subscribe and support me. I will put up tutorials like this and a lot of other stuff. I already have a lot of other stuff in my channel. 
So please subscribe and support me and see you in another one.